to prominent external curators to create an exhibition that includes arts project and external contemporary artists. Most of our other exhibitions in this gallery space are curated by arts project artists and or staff, so it's quite special. Our intention with this initiative is to make broader connections with external curators, artists, institutions and galleries to increase the exposure and promotion of our artists and their work within contemporary art practice. We also believe that partnering with prominent curators and artists will help create relationships and ambassadors for Arts Project, our work and their work. And because this program has been running for over 10 years, I can attest to the fact that some tremendous opportunities have grown out of this program. I'm particularly delighted to welcome our external curator, Eric Nash, who is the, currently the director of Benalla Art Gallery. And I also had the pleasure of working with Eric back in the day when I was president of the Public Galleries Association of Victoria and welcome Anne Robertson from the PGAV. And uh, Eric set up our first public programs program, I suppose, in, in the PGAV pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah, everything's BC. It's been a delight to have him. He's actually uh, become a parent again during the curation of this exhibition. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're really delighted to welcome Eric to, to talk to you about his show, Tones of Home. Thank you, Sue. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for welcoming me here today. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation, the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting, and honour the resilience, wisdom, dignity, scientific knowledge, stories, and art of the world's longest surviving culture. This week, I'd particularly like to extend my thoughts to the many members of our First Nations community who may be experiencing pain and sorrow associated with last weekend's referendum. I think it's important, given the theme of this exhibition, to acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and to consider the events that have led to me being so fortunate to call this country home. So before speaking about this exhibition, I'd also like to acknowledge that there are a number of faces I see here today who have been fundamental to my own experience of finding home, particularly in Victoria and within the arts. You know who you are, and there are many, and what you've done for me, but please know how much it's appreciated. But today, I'd especially like to acknowledge Sue Roth for how, <laughs> for how welcome she made me feel since we met through the Public Galleries Association of Victoria when I first moved to, to the state. And I see how your innate ability to make people feel welcome and valued is reflected in the incredible community that you've dedicated yourself to building at Arts Project Australia. So with this being your last exhibition launch in this space at the helm of Arts Project oh. Australia, I wanted to take a moment to say oh, thank you sad. and congratulations, and here's to you, Sue. If everyone can give her a big round of applause. That's so I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to work with the team and wonderful artists at Arts Project Australia, and indeed artists from across the country, to present this exhibition, Tones of Home. As you can see, this exhibition spans a variety of media, with works by Stephen Aschenberg, Miles Howard Wilkes, Chris Mason, Chris O'Brien, Lisa Reed, Anthony Romagnano, Georgia Smerling, and Amani Tia, alongside Atomia Tam, Susie Bucks, Doug Cooper, and Victoria, Doug Spout, Victoria Cooper, that's what I've done, I've merged you together, apologies, <laughs> Aerodance, Torres Strait, and Ghostnet Collective, Aisha Kenton, and Ron McBurney, all inspired by domestic and urban spaces and the lives that they have formed. <laughs> so this ex exhibition extends beyond these settings to consider what makes a place a home. Touching on notions of family, community, belonging, connection, love, comfort, safety and personal histories. Gently powerful photographs by Aisha Kenton from Aisha Kenton's most recent series, Orchid, which are just over here to my right, take viewers on an intimate journey of self-discovery. Lisa Reed's paintings, presented in association with them, of staged family portraits, conjure thoughts of the sepia-toned family photos that adorn many of our homes, 
while alluding to foundational family events that often shape our personal identities. A Tommy Thames Henna One, taken from the spectacular video artwork Banksia, broadly examines migrant stories from a non-colonial perspective, and in this context, gives pause for thought about who has historically been made welcome to call Australia home, and who was not through national policy. Victoria Cooper and Doug Spout, got it that time, recent <laughs> Desire Pass books resonate with their shared life, indeed merged life, an artistic journey and gives visual form in their words to the desire to discover new paths around the traditional norms. Chris Mason's work similarly celebrates important relationships in his life. His partner Monica, you can cheer that one. <laughs> yes, you go. The fellow artists and staff at Arts Project Australia are relationships that provide a foundation for his own conception of home as somewhere that feels nice and safe and like well living. The sense of community and belonging to Arts Project itself, as I mentioned at the top, is palpable in reviewing work by many Arts Project Australia artists, and in this show is also evidenced in the masterful watercolours of the Marnie Tia. An installation to my left of works by Arab Arts Torres Strait and Ghost Net Collective in Northern Australia is centred on the piece At Home Together, a nationwide COVID-19 project which weaves together contributions from across the country to reflect the universal practice of coming together for a meal. This feasting bowl is surrounded by individual rays, the carriers of family and personal histories and connections, all the different aspects that make a place, a home, gathered into the bowl. Georges Merling's beautiful underwater dining set to my right shares that similarly celebrates the reef but moreover alludes to the ways in which we fill our homes with both decorative and functional objects which reflect the places and the things that we love. Townsville printmaker Ron McBurney's immaculate etching just to the other side of Lisa Reed's work, the storyteller, also celebrates those moments of coming together, inviting us into the Atherton Tablelands backyard of his artist friends to sit around the fire, surrounded by lush tropical vegetation and share stories. Also stoked in the fires of a regional Australian backyard are the beautiful ceramic forms of Susie Bucks, which are inspired by the natural colours and lines of the country of North East Victoria, together with the changing hues of the grazing country and bushland. They are fired in hand-built teepees at her son's property in the Warren Bain Hills. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> It wasn't me, that's a nice change. Someone said, bring to celebrate Lisa. <laughs> and while talking about Susie, can I say I'm personally humbled to see many participating artists here, but particularly Susie, and hope that recent experiences of showing your work in galleries such as this are deservedly affirming of a practice you have maintained for many decades. In viewing Susie's works, I can almost hear the sounds of the country, the whistling wind, the crackle of fire, and the call of the birds. Miles Howard Wilkes is an artist who is similarly inspired by nature, celebrating the bird life that also calls our suburban landscape home. Magpies perch and dart through and around gardens, roads, cars and trains. For artist Anthony Romagnano, home is a space of comfort and creativity, somewhere the iPad is where I draw. His depictions of home are vibrant in colour, but exude an assuring stillness, a companion cat, a place to relax and create a lounge room and TV to unwind. Stephen Aschenberg's artist book brings to pictorial life the common activities within the home, sleeping, eating and bathing, all activities which align with his concept of home as somewhere I am comfortable, where I can relax the toes and everything else, and if we could all have a home like that, we'd be doing well. Chris O'Brien's soft sculptures most directly examine the structure of the home, but remain informed by personal memories. Works such as my Nan's Holiday House underscore the fact that homes are much more than just a structure. They are containers of personal histories, love and family, spaces to form community and connections, and to feel a sense of belonging, comfort and safety. I hope you all find this space to be a welcoming one, just as you would feel welcome in your own home or be welcomed into a friend's home to experience joy and inspiration. So throughout the development of the exhibition, as Sue alluded to, it became uh, 
Oh, sorry, I skipped ahead. It became obvious I wanted to present a show that was quite sprawling. And so I've drawn together over 50 works designed to be as full, rich, and varied in content and concept as are the many places and communities we each choose to call home. And now to crudely twist your arms, as is my style. Many of the works on show are available for purchase. Woo! <laughs> and I do encourage you to consider welcoming a work you love into your own home. Doing so supports not only Arts Project Australia, but also helps to sustain the creative practices of the many talented artists that are featured. So I started today with some acknowledgements, and I also want to conclude with some final but very important acknowledgements. Firstly, my profuse thanks to all of the participating artists for their incredible works. This show is a testament to your respective practices. Round of applause, please. Beyond that, my personal thanks also to the team at Arts Project Australia, particularly Joe Salt, for your unwavering support. A round of applause for the team. <laughs> Finally, I want to send my love and thanks to the most important people in my life, without whom it wouldn't matter where I was, I wouldn't feel at home. So even though they can't be here today, thank you to my daughter Harper, my son Riley, who was born during the development of this show, as Sue pointed out, and mostly to my beautiful wife, Tegan. She is honestly an inspiration with a seemingly endless source of energy to nourish and care, not only for our family, but for our community, as evidenced today by the free music event, which means she can't be here, that she's coordinating for the people of Benalla. So that's enough words from me. Thank you for joining us to celebrate, and I hope you all enjoy the exhibition.